For the longest time, I've been someone who loves to have multiple displays on my desk. Last year, I had three screens on my desk, a vertical monitor, my iMac, and a secondary monitor off to the side. Now this setup worked really well. I loved the 5K iMac. I loved having so much screen real estate on my desk, but I always wonder what it'd be like to get an ultra wide screen instead of having three separate screens on my desk. Now because of my iMac, I never really thought about this too much in detail. I just kind of stuck with my iMac. It worked really well. But earlier this year in January, my iMac iMac completely died randomly out of the blue, so I decided to take the opportunity to completely overhaul my desk setup. What I essentially did was get rid of my iMac and replace it with the Mac Mini, but with the Mac Mini, I got a Dell 38 inch ultra wide monitor, and in this video, we'll be doing a deep dive into this monitor and really figuring out if it's worth getting an ultra wide versus having multiple screens on your desk for productivity purposes. Hi there, my name is Manith Paul Singh, and on this channel, we explore ways to use tech to get more things done. And this Dell ultra wide monitor is definitely a way to get more things done. Ultra wide monitors typically are used in the gaming world, but more recently I've been seeing a lot of people get them for productivity purposes. Now I spent weeks researching which monitor to get and I ended up getting the Dell 38 inch ultra sharp monitor from B&H. I ordered it from their website and it came in the mail in this ginormous box. It was super heavy and a lot bigger than I thought it would be. But when I opened opened it up, it was packaged really, really nicely. It was really easy to assemble, no tools required. It took me basically 15, 20 minutes start to finish from unboxing it to having it on my desk. Now I'll talk much more about the cables, the features, all the ports and stuff like that later on in the video. But right now, first thing is first, when I plugged in the monitor and used it, it was a really interesting experience having one giant screen on the desk instead of two separate screens. It's basically like having two different apps open at the same time, very comfortably that you can use with one big screen. Some examples of this that I've been using is having my Zoom calls open on one half of the screen and then my Google Chrome on the other half or my Notion on one side and my web browser over here. It's really flexible in that regard. But one first world problem that I personally have with this monitor is I could only really open up two apps side by side in a comfortable way. I was really hoping for the ability to open up three apps side by side by side all on one screen without having to shrink or resize anything. Now this is such a first world problem. Having two apps side by side is perfectly fine, but I kind of wish I got the opportunity to try a 49 inch screen, which is way bigger than this 38 inch screen, but I think that would have allowed me to have three apps open all at the same time. I can do that with this monitor, but I have to shrink them down ever so slightly so they're in thirds, but they are a little bit smaller than I would have liked compared to having a larger screen and having three apps open at the same time. With that being said though, that's really my only biggest complaint about this monitor that I wasn't expecting. I had a few other concerns buying an ultra wide that I'll talk about in this video, but all of those concerns got addressed a day or two after using this. The only thing I really had a problem with that I'm still questioning a little bit was the size of the screen. If I could go back in time, I may have gotten something a little bit bigger. Now, as I mentioned a minute ago, I spent so much time researching ultra wide monitors and figuring out which one to get. And one of the biggest concerns that I had was resolution. I'm coming from a 5K 27 inch iMac and I didn't want to go up to a big downgrade and having a potato quality screen compared to my 5K iMac. And I'm really happy that this monitor does not feel like potato at all. The 30 inch display is a 3840 by 1600 resolution. It's really, really sharp. It's not quite 4K, but it's also not just full HD. It's somewhere in the middle. Now there are some 4K resolution ultra wide monitors on the market. They're actually called 5K, 2K displays. It's really confusing, but those are the ones that are actually 4K. I was considering that for a little while, but they're just so much more expensive. The actual 4K resolution will cost cost you around $2,000. Dell actually just came out with their 5K 2K display this month and that costs over $2,000 compared to this monitor, which is only $1,000, even less. And that is a big difference in price. To be absolutely clear, the new monitor that Dell just released is 40 inch in size and this is 38 inches. And it's a thousand dollar price difference simply because of the resolution. And I don't think it would be worth the upgrade to that. This is a beautiful resolution using it for everyday tasks. I don't see any difference in quality. For videos on YouTube, there's a 
slight difference in pixel quality there, but in reality, when using it for everyday things, it's not noticeable at all. It still looks absolutely stunning. Everything is really sharp. Text is really clear. I have no complaints about the resolution and I'm so happy that wasn't an issue for me. Now, the other major concern that I had putting resolution aside was the age of this screen. This monitor originally came out in 2018. It's currently 2021. Tech advances really fast and I was really worried that I was buying old tech. To put that in comparison, if I bought an iPhone in 2018, it would be the iPhone XS. And that is a huge difference in quality compared to the current iPhones that we have right now. As it turns out, the world of monitors is much slower compared to smartphones and things haven't really changed much over the past few years. Like I just said, right now in January of 2021, Dell is just releasing their 4K version of this monitor and it costs double the price. I don't think this will be getting outdated anytime soon. It's still a really awesome piece of tech and it has lasted already for a few years. I have no doubt it'll last many years to come. Now don't be mistaken, even though I'm saying this thing came out in 2018, it still has all the features you would expect from something in 2021. Let me talk about those. First thing is first, it has a USB-C connection and this is actually not something that all ultra wide monitors have. Make sure you check for that if that's important to you. For me, I have the M1 Mac mini that requires a USB-C for the full resolution output or for a laptop, you can also use it for that. Now, if you're using a laptop, this monitor is absolutely perfect for it because it has 100 watts of power coming from the monitor to charge your laptop. And the reason why this is important is most ultra wide monitors that I found through my research only output 50 or 60 watts of power. That's only enough power to charge a 13 inch laptop. If you have a 15 inch or a larger computer, you're gonna wanna get this monitor because it's one of the only ones out there that has 100 watts of charging capability. And I know that sounds really silly, but that's actually really, really important. If you wanna have that very clean one cable going to your laptop that's outputting video, USB, as well as charging all through one cable, this is a monitor that will check all those boxes. Now, speaking of USB, there's a bunch of USB ports on this monitor, two on the side, as well as a few on the back, HDMI ports, display ports. It has all the connections you would expect for an ultra wide monitor. The way it works for USB is you plug in all your peripherals to the monitor itself. Then you have the downstream port from the monitor go to your laptop or your computer. So for me, I have my webcam and my microphone all going into the monitor itself. And then the monitor has that one cable from USB-C going to my Mac mini and all that data is being transferred through that one cable all at the same time. The cool thing about that as well though, is you can actually have multiple computers connected to this monitor all sharing the same peripherals. So if you have a work computer and a personal computer, this will work really well for that. There's also some really cool picture in picture features that you can play with too. Now, one thing I wish I did a little more research on myself before buying this monitor were the speakers inside. I kind of expected the speakers to suck. So I ended up buying some really expensive, fancy studio quality speakers for my desk. That's a story for another day, but I could have gotten by with the speakers built into the screen. They actually aren't half bad. Don't get me wrong. They're not perfect. They don't sound amazing, but they do sound sound pretty good and I could have gotten by with just those. <laughs> Now the bezels on this monitor are super, super thin. Coming from an iMac, these things are beautifully thin. They are completely gone. They call it the infinity display with the very thin bezels, but they aren't very infinity looking. There's still like half an inch of a bezel there, but coming from an iMac, it's a night and day difference. These are not distracting at all. Now out of the box, you get a bunch of cables, HDMI cables, USB-C cable, display port cable, USB cables, everything you'd expect for an ultra wide monitor. The the only complaint I have about the cables is they're very, very stiff. I'm kind of scared of bending them too much and breaking them. It has like a crunchy feeling. It's hard to describe. The USB-C cable especially is very, very stiff. It also means it's very durable, but I'm just worried about bending it too much. It's a weird feeling. Now, one thing to note is this display is slightly curved and it actually is very, very subtle. This is my first time using a curved display and I really don't have much to say about it. It works really, really well. It's really meant for the gaming world having a nice immersive feeling, but this is a very subtle curve. You don't really notice it using it every single day. The one complaint I have about it though, if a standing desk like I do, it wobbles like crazy. My iMac had no wobbling issues at all because it had a lot of weight to it. 
This one, if I shake my desk with my typing on it by a little bit even, it wobbles so, so much. That's something that I find really annoying. This ultra wide screen is a 21 by nine aspect ratio. A lot of movies are actually filmed in this wide screen format. So when you go on YouTube and search for a 21 by nine video, it's super immersive watching a giant widescreen video in full screen mode on this monitor. It's something you have to see in person to really get the feeling of. I definitely recommend that. I do really love having one screen on my desk compared to having three separate screens from before. I don't think I'll be able to go back to having three screens on my desk after using this one for a month now. It's just so much more pleasant and modern looking having one clean setup on your desk. Especially when dragging things back and forth between different parts of your screen, not having a bezel or having a separation between two different screens. It's something that you have to experience to really get the understanding of how much it makes a difference in your workflow. Now, one thing Dell does very well is customer service and warranty. And that's kind of the reason why I ended up choosing Dell as the brand for what I wanted to get. I would rather pay a company that I know is gonna back me up over the long term, many years ahead, in case something happens to the display. It has a three year warranty on the screen and the customer service has a reputation of being very, very good. I would always pay for that over some fancy looking screen. Putting customer service aside, I really do love the build quality itself of the monitor. It is a nice black finish. It is plastic, but I don't think it's a cheap plastic. It does fit really nicely with my desk, which is also black. And I do think it's more of a professional vibe compared to LG's modern look with that white back. I actually like this black finish a lot more. It just looks more professional and more sleek on my desk. If you're watching this and you're considering buying this monitor, let me know if any questions come up that I didn't talk about in this video. I'll be more than happy to answer them for you in the comments down below. If you enjoyed watching this video, I want to recommend my review of the MX Master Mouse. It's one of the best things I have on my desk for productivity purposes. I would recommend that alongside this monitor. They work really well together. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.